Lord be with you. A Falcher Road on behalf of this community of Bunclody, Kildavan, Honeygall, and Kilrush, a special welcome, especially to those who have travelled the distance to be here at St Mary's Church today, and those who come to us who have not come from so far, but are particularly welcome, uh, the choir of the Most Holy Trinity Church, our friends in Jesus Christ down the road here in Bunclody, who, along with our organist, Mr. Sam Jacob, and indeed our soloist, Ms. Mia Collier from Kildavan, will be hearing as we go through the service. This is a special day to remember and give thanks for the lives of those we love but see no more. We especially remember all those who died during the COVID pandemic when funerals were restricted to such small numbers. And so we take a moment today also to remember also those who continue to grieve, both in this country and also where war and famine, where violence and floods continue to cause suffering and death. We hold in our hearts, especially at this time, our Ukrainian friends who have been welcomed into the safety and love of the people of this community. And so before we hear a prayer for all who have been bereaved, let us take a moment of silence to remember our loved ones. God of all comfort, defender of the helpless who grieves alongside those left behind. Heal the brokenhearted and console the desolate. Do not hide in silence from those who mourn, but visit them with hope and healing, so that in you they may find an unexpected blessing and know that peace which the world cannot give. Through the eternal love and mercy of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. And so this service of remembrance will be like a Songs of Praise format. Each reading, read by a family member or friend of a loved one we are remembering, has inspired the selected hymn which follows. You're welcome to... Follow the reading in your Bible or a Bible that might be on your pew and you will then sing the words of that reading in the words of the hymn. And just as could I ask before we start, uh, the readers, as your turn comes around, to come up here to the lectern during the last verse of the hymn before your reading. And so before our first hymn, let us hear our first reading from Ms. Heather James. A reading from Revelations, chapter 15, verses 3 to 4. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song, song of the Lamb. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your judgments have been revealed.
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. A reading from Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 to 11. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My purpose shall stand and I will fulfil my intention. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man for my purpose from a far country. I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have planned, and I will do it.
form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. reading from Exodus chapter 16 verses 4 to 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day when they prepare what they bring in it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your, your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has had, heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud.
reading from Psalm 26, beginning at verse 1. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. reading from Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 to 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, 
through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will receive me with honour. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, 
but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Indeed, those who are far from you will perish. You put an end to those who are false to you, but for me it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge to tell of all your works.
A reading from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
And please sit or kneel for our prayers. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, whose beloved Son, Jesus Christ, conquered death and opened the door of new life. You, Lord, are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. <coughs> Heal our grief and sense of loss and give us that peace which the world cannot give. Keep us ever mindful of the lessons of Jesus Christ, your Son, in how to show love. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us on earth, to turn to Christ in love and to follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, trusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, saying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So just before our blessing and farewell, I'd like to firstly just thank, particularly our choir, it was wonderful, and the, the, the way everybody was encouraged to sing made this a wonderful, wonderful service. And to thank Sam, our organist, and also Mia, our, our soloist, for that beautiful rendition of The Rose. I know your Granny Violet would have been very proud, Mia. And to thank all our readers, indeed, and collectors, and all who helped to organise this service. We're always looking for readers. I can see great potential. Um, in, in, in uh, those we have heard. Um, some read regularly and, and some maybe not so much. Um, but at the door, the August newsletter um, is available and all the readings are on it, uh, as well as all the services. So um, maybe if you were interested, um, you, you might um, offer to, to read one of the Sundays coming up um, now or in the future. There's also the weekly update, a few hard copies. If, um, if you're on the email list, you will probably have it. Uh, but if not, there are a few hard copies at the door as well. But I do want to especially thank the family of Sam Deacon, who have been central to the organising of this service. Um, to Margaret Watkins and Rachel Bailey, and who are sisters of Sam, of course, and to Daphne Walsh Deacon, sister-in-law who printed the beautiful booklet, um, and indeed to all their friends, indeed, and, and many people who have prepared refreshments for us all afterwards. And so as we gather outside, hopefully to, uh, to just meet one another and to uh, enjoy some fellowship, um, on Wednesday I'd like to also thank Anya because we hopefully will have a recording of this service. For those who are not able to uh, attend for one reason or another um, and that hopefully will be on YouTube from Wednesday onwards. So um, all things going well. Uh, we can tell people who weren't able to get here where, where, they, can, where they can watch it. And so to our blessing and farewell. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all those you hold in your heart this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.